Hi, Sam. Oh my god, I'm live on the internet. I know, like, right? I've been off the internet for half an hour now. <laughs> uh, hey, how are you? We're doing How's good. Everyone? We're good. What yeah. is up with your audio? <laughs> it's, it sounds like you're in a fan or something. Yes, Do you a have a MacBook? Club. Yeah. Well, there are fans <laughs> running. You have to keep the computers <laughs> cooled down, okay? It, it me, like you don't have MacBook. any snow, I, I assume. <laughs> Let me try uh, a little bit of more of the filtering. Is this any better? Oh, there oh thank we go. you. There you go. That's so much better. <laughs> it sounded like my, like my old MacBook. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that was... And, uh, you know, the, we have to keep our computers nice and cool. They do a lot for us these days. Since... Yeah, they do. <laughs> Since we live on the internet and everything is virtual. But uh, I wanted to take a moment to thank the three of you uh, for putting this uh, on. Uh, I know it's a lot of work, but uh, thank you. We are glad to be here. Thank you. Thank and you for joining yeah, us. Yeah, we're so happy you're joining us. And I cannot and, and... Tell you. No, no. It's, <laughs> I was just going to say, yeah. like, I, I wish I was with you in Europe, but hey, yeah, it's the world we are living in. Hopefully, sometime soon this year. We'll see. Oh, yeah. yeah. You definitely don't want to be with us right now because it's snowy, it's cold, it's... <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm in, Actually, uh... I think it's the other way around. Yeah. We remember sun. I mean, it's humid, but it's still sun and we remember sun vaguely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I live in Northwest uh, Pennsylvania uh, in the US and uh, we're, we are used to our uh, share of snow and gloomy weather for three months. <laughs> yeah. What, what, are, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> oh, and also to all the viewers, don't forget to tweet. We still have a bunch of prizes to give out. We have uh, books from Pact, and we have $100 gift cards from uh, Progress Celeric. So just tweet us, and you might win. So do you have a screen to share as well? No, it's just my face for the next 45 minutes. <laughs> oh, you're, di fine. you're dancing as well? <laughs> I wish, I wish. Uh, no dancing? You can play the piano in, you go in the background. Yeah, if, if you are completely bored, I can go and play, play the piano. You know? <laughs> I, I, I am as like artistically challenged as one can get. Uh, I'm just lazy. Like I, I'm a streamer and I have a green screen, which I'm too lazy to bring it down, so it stays up all the time. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, yeah, let me know when you want me to uh, start or yeah, we got what a couple of minutes still yeah. left. Yeah. So you just streamed? Is that so? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, we uh, we stream quite a few times a week. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually uh, just had a thing with. Uh, actually, hang on. Let me uh, stop this thing. About uh, there's a little banner that comes up. You're showing your desktop. Like I know, I, I <laughs> shared it, uh, but <laughs> no. Uh, uh, I, I was doing a stream just probably at a half an hour, one hour back uh, with uh, somebody from Microsoft. How often do you stream? Uh, depends, three to four times a week sometimes. Yeah. So quite a bit. Well, what do you do? It's the world of pandemic that we're living in. And uh, at least yeah. we are able to get together online, if not in person. Yeah, definitely. And you share some code and stuff like that as well over there? Yeah. 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 That's what we do. Perfect. And we know where you can go find more. <laughs> yeah. And uh, right. I know uh, <laughs> you uh, You two are in Belgium. What, what about you, Daniel? Like, where are you at? So are are you we in Belgium? In Belgium? No, I'm, I'm <laughs> in Sweden. Jeez, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we are, I wish Belgium. we had their chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> what is you this know, chocolate I, you're talking yeah. about? <laughs> I'm in Sweden. And Daniel, you're in we Sweden know. too? Yes, two hour north right. uh, in right. Stockholm. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. No, it's not. <laughs> it's People keep cold. saying it's nice. <laughs> I want to be there. No, you don't. Yeah. I, I, I will During take it. Absolutely. I will take a change. I'll take it. So yesterday, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, I think yesterday or the day before, like somebody tweeted something and it went viral. It had like 700,000 likes or tweets. And it's just uh, this thing called the pandemic wall. Okay. <laughs> we are all hitting that thing. It's just the isolation and yeah. just the nonstop work and juggling childcare and a thousand other things all being at home. It's, it's hard. It's uh, so like, be, be kind to yourself. Uh, <laughs> you're doing these times and your families. 
Yeah, I don't know how many sourdough loaves we have <laughs> made. <laughs> yeah. We uh, when right. the pandemic started, like we started out uh, with a lot of like zest for cooking and just like cooking up new cuisines, but we were running out of steam here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Macaroni and cheese every day now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you ready to take uh, it away? I don't know. Uh, am I? Uh, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> and if, if you folks are bored with uh, what I'm about to talk about, we can talk about something else. It's, it's the internet, right? Uh, so don't believe anything that I say. <laughs> <laughs> More blazer. Yeah, but, More blazer. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Looking forward. Right, take it away. All right, so we have about uh, 30 minutes or so until um, Danielle, uh, Jessica, and Jimmy kick me out. So this is my hour to shine, and I have 30 slides to go through. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. This is Twitch. I won't do that to you. Uh, let's chat. Let's uh, let's look at some code. Let's look at some maybe fun stuff, uh, do some demos, uh, which uh, might fail left or right, but and you can all laugh at me. Uh, but hey, let's start. Um, okay, so uh, I don't have any intros. Um, anything else you are looking at, just my browser. I will pull up maybe uh, one quick thing, which uh, I don't think uh, our names are showing, but let's see if I can. Uh, maybe I cannot. Uh, right there. Oops, too big. Hang on. I'm trying to show you my, uh, or maybe somebody can just post. Like, that. that's me on Twitter. That's, that's me, okay? That's uh, Sam Basu. Um, I am a developer advocate um, at uh, Progress Software. I deal a lot with .NET. Uh, I work with uh, some of the things that you may know uh, or use, uh, Telerik, uh, Kendi UI, Fiddler. Those are the things we make uh, to make developers more productive. Okay. Uh, so uh, welcome to .NET uh, front end. And again, thank you for the organizers for putting this together. Thank you for having me on. So nice to be here with all of you. Uh, so we don't have a lot of time, and let's uh, kind of dive into what uh, the promise might be. I think uh, my session is about uh, Blazor on mobile and desktop, but we'll, we'll cross some uh, platform boundaries. We'll, we'll see where we end up. So um, I'm, I'm old. If you uh, cannot tell yet, I've been doing uh, software and uh, trying to stay on the bleeding edge for quite some years now. So uh, this is a fun time to be a .NET developer. It's a fun time to be a JavaScript developer because we are seeing a lot of overlap. Uh, so let's start with Blazor. And uh, we'll also talk about um, Xamarin a little bit because uh, I know like some of you uh, may do both. I know like Daniel for sure does, uh, does both. If you look at uh, the .NET stack today, like going forward right uh, with with dotnet i think these are the two like the bleeding edge technologies on which like these are the two pillars like blazor and xamarin forms right and um thankfully we have a lot of flexibility we have a lot of choice but i think uh like it's a clear choice for developers like do you want to do web stuff then you go do blazor or you do anything other asp.net or are you okay with c sharp and xaml or mvu uh, patterns and then you do uh, Xamarin forms, right? And what you can see, I think, moving forward, like we are at uh, .NET 5, which came out um, last November, and um, Blazor, Xamarin forms just had a 5.0 release, Blazor has had a release. So these things are getting a lot of attention and innovation. And I think what you're going to see moving forward through the rest of the year is .NET 6 is going to be out in November of 2021, and you're going to see a lot of like bleed over, right? So as a Xamarin Forms developer, if you're doing C Sharp and XAML, your apps will go to the desktop um, in a way, maybe a little ambitious to the web, uh, not through like a Silverlight type plugin, but through WebAssembly. And then on the Blazor side, like you're going to see again, like that match over uh, often, uh, you are going to be able to write, uh, if you wanted to, mobile apps uh, or desktop apps with Blazor, right? So fun times, right? So. Let's dive in and take a look at uh, what uh, this might entail. Like I said, I will dive into some code. I'll dive into some demos. Hopefully, just kind of touch the tip of the iceberg, show you what might be possible. And keep in mind, some of this thing is experimental. So maybe don't go write uh, uh, production apps yet with it. But we are, we are getting there. OK, so hopefully, uh, I think there was uh, maybe a couple of sessions on Blazor uh, today already. But um, hopefully, you know what Blazor is. The promise is to write C Sharp uh, front and back. Uh, it's the new web application uh, stack uh, on ASP.NET, and it's beautiful. It's it's very, very exciting. If you look at the possibilities of where Blazor is and where we started and where things are today, 
um, you can have Blazor two ways. One is you can run Blazor server side, which is kind of like what ASP.NET does anyways, but um, you are maintaining a shadow DOM on the client side and you have a signal R bridge over real time. So you're updating things on the client side and you're going back and forth, uh, but the Razor syntax and the Blazor component model, that's how you're building your app and your app is running server side. That's one way and that's where we started. But then WebAssembly is the new standard. Uh, it's a low level standard that all of the new evergreen browsers are agreeing up upon and that gives us a way to run your Blazor applications completely client side which is in WebAssembly, it just gets compiled down and you are shipping like .NET assemblies uh, to your browser and running it completely client side, which is, which is great. So again, Blazor, you know where to start. Uh, uh, do a search, start with the docs. If you have not done Blazor, it is very exciting. Okay, so take a look at here and you don't have to throw away JavaScript. Uh, nobody is bashing JavaScript here. If you're doing Angular, React or Vue, you're more than welcome to keep on doing it. This is for the folks who are writing JavaScript, but maybe not enjoying it. So this gives you a way to write C-sharp on the client side and you, there, there's a little interrupt bridge so you can cross over and you can do JavaScript and, and Blazor. Uh, if you wanted to. And then Xamarin Forms is going strong as well. Xamarin Forms started out as like an abstraction platform. Uh, you can go to iOS or Android uh, for sure, but then we have also built um, renderers for other things. Like you can go to Tizen, which is an operating system that Samsung makes. You can go to WPF. Uh, you can uh, go to um, uh, things like WebAssembly if you wanted to. So again, that ecosystem is growing and .NET MAUI is coming, which is gonna make things a lot more formal. So you can go to Mac, you can go to WPF uh, or like Windows Desktop on top of WinUI. So a lot of things happening. So what can you do with Blazor, right? Of course, you can write web applications. That's what everybody does. And that's not what we are here to talk about because that's something hopefully you're already doing. But what about the other platforms, right? Uh, if you look into your phones right now, you will see, I think most of your apps are native, right? So while uh, the web is there, there is no replacing native apps, uh, obviously. So can Blazor help us write uh, native apps uh, or even like hybrid apps with uh, with the web stack and put it in the stores um, so we um, uh, so we can get access to it. Let me check if I'm seeing all the comments uh, from all of you. I, I think I am, uh, but if anything needs to be highlighted, I'm sure uh, the folks in the, um, in the backstage can highlight comments for us. Um, so um, with Blazor, uh, the thing that we are not going to talk about a whole lot is this thing called a progressive web application. Okay, if you have not heard this term, it is literally what it means. Your your web application gets progressively better, and it's a much better citizen on a mobile form factor. It is still a web application. You are distributing content through the web. There is nothing different, but it starts behaving like a good citizen, and you can have push notifications. People can pin your um, uh, your home screen to. Uh, like like an icon on their uh, on their uh, on their phones. You can have service workers running in the background. So again, you are writing purely a web application and you're distributing it uh, as a PWA. So again, uh, none of this tech is different. It is um, just here uh, to help you uh, reach that mobile form factor. Um, I'm seeing a comment here. Will Maui replace Blazor or vice versa? No, no, no. It's it's all going to be together. It's all one uh, happy family. Yeah. Thank you for highlighting the comment. Uh, and like I said, MAUI is the evolution of XAML forms. So that will open up the funnel so you can write C Sharp XAML, you can write uh, Blazor mobile bindings, which I'll talk about, and or you can do MVU. So again, that's kind of more catering towards the .NET audience, but Blazor is for the web audience, the .NET web audience, and you can mix and match and nothing is being replaced. It, like Blazor and MAUI will, will be the two pillars on which modern .NET stands going forward. Um, so if you are in the business of making a PWA, um, so it is any website can be a PWA. It's questionable whether um, it, it should, but like if I uh, start with my blog, for example, if I just copy that, there's a beautiful thing called the PWA Builder. Uh, if I go ahead and and, uh, and paste my blog, it will it will tell you all the things that I'm not doing, right? So a PWA has a manifest file that declares to the OS to the browser, like here are the things that my app can do. Uh, you can pin your um, app to the home screen. You can have uh, an icon. Do you have a service worker? Do you have push notifications? Like mine doesn't do anything. So it's complaining uh, that I don't do anything. And then you can start from here. You can start with a service worker. You can start with the manifest file and go on, uh, do that. There are lots of frameworks like Bootstrap uh, that help make uh, mobile websites like touch friendly and nicer. So again, you're building a, building a true web application with 
laser at this point. And if you wanted to kind of see this in action, like I mentioned, I work for Progress Software, so uh, uh, forgive my bias here, but this is Teleric.com, and we make a lot of components for uh, Blazor, but I'm just trying to show you a demo here. If I get down here and uh, pull up uh, Blazor, uh, one of the things we have built is if I look at the demos, again, nothing to install, just for you to kind of play around. This first thing here, this is a finance application, and it has like some of the charts and graphs that we do well. But this is a Blazor PWA, right? So right down here, you see that install thing. You can run this on desktop. You can run this on mobile. And I mean, it's it's perfectly uh, like responsive if I go do that. That, by the way, is not my car. Uh, it is Iron Man's car. It's uh, Audi e-tron, which is coming later this year. So this is uh, fully responsive, and it's beautiful, and it's pure web. This is a PWA, right? So there's nothing stopping you from doing this. You can do this all day. But let's talk about, uh, talk about some of the other things. One is the mobile Blazor bindings. This is literally a step on top of Xamarin Forms. You're sitting on the Xamarin Forms stack and you're rendering native apps, but you're not writing C Sharp and XAML. You're writing Blazor syntax, right? So this is still experimental. And like I said, this is pure Xamarin Forms um, and it, it's nice. And then we'll talk about the desktop as well. So let's take a look at some code. I'm what, 17 minutes in, let's, let's see. Pull up Visual Studio here. I'm on a Mac, but you don't need to be. It's the same uh, Mac or, uh, or Windows or Mac on this one. Um, so let's see, um, what can I show you? Let's let's start uh, here. So let's make this bigger. Um, it's loading. All right, so, uh, and it's quickly restoring. Uh, there we go. So when you start with this Blazor mobile bindings, you get a CLI uh, and you um, start out your application. It gives you a project structure that is uh, very much, if I can bump up the fonts here, that's very much like Xamarin Forms. You have platform specific solutions like iOS or Android, and then you have a document standard library. The only thing that's different here is we are not gonna use actual C Sharp and XAML. Here's my imports razor, which brings in all the namespaces that I want. Uh, this app here is actually gonna pull down some code. It's like a hello world app. If I can pull up this URL here, I'm going to just a, a sample JSON feed. It's called JSON placeholder. And uh, if I go down here, they have like restful endpoints, like this one's bringing back a list of posts, which are in Latin. Uh, so if I wanted to bring this down into a mobile app, here's what I will do. Uh, in my app.cs, uh, again, some of this is just boilerplate. You notice that this is not a Xamarin from startup. This is kind of more like a ASP.NET hosting startup. And then I have a couple of little objects here. This is the object that represents the posts that are gonna come back from the service. Uh, this is a constants file that points to that URL. And then I have a little manager class, which uh, let me bump up the fonts here as well, which knows how to do an HTTP client call. It's using async and await, and it's pulling it down, and it's binding it. It's putting it into an object that I can bind to. And then I have a Razor component. So everything is, is Razor here. It is literally Xamarin forms, but we're not writing Xamarin forms. Here it's a label, and this is like classic uh, Blazor code. Uh, I'm passing a parameter into it. And then if I look at uh, Hello World Razor, this kind of looks a little bit like Xamarin Forms, but it's not because it's using some of the visual tree, like the stack we have, the content view. But inside of it, uh, this is kind of a for each. This is a Blazor component, right? So if I go ahead and run this real quick on my simulator, because I'm on a Mac, it knows how to go to Xcode, do the build and come back. So that's my iPhone simulator coming up real quick. And come on, come on, quick, quick, quick. And there we go. Okay, so here's the list, right? So like we saw uh, from the web stack, it's just pulling that JSON down. What's interesting is that if I do that little flip here, you'll notice that the text flips. That is the result of uh, being able to refer to like a button natively. That's a native iOS button and we're able to rotate uh, that whole thing. So even when you're doing Blazor mobile bindings, you can absolutely go down to native land and, and do other things. Uh, and I have other examples here, which I'm going to run out of time. But if you're using things like Xamarin Essentials, you have full access to all of the native APIs that come with all of your devices. So you can do accelerometer, GPS, geolocation. You can do all of that. Okay. So that's a quick look at uh, mobile bindings. Let me show you maybe just a different sample of this. Um, uh, just to kind of show you that you can wrap things fairly easily. If you already have a Xamarin Forms project and if you want to bring it over and maybe invite somebody into your code base that's doing Blazor, you can do that. 
Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm bringing in, uh, just as a sample, a uh, Telerik uh, UI, which is a pure Xamarin Forms control, but I'm not using the laser bindings here. What I have here is a calendar and a numeric input, and the input of the numeric input, I'm controlling it with the stepper, so that's classic laser. So what I had to do to enable this is just a couple of steps. You have to inherit or support a couple of views. You have to uh, register that assembly and make sure you are building a wrapper over that Xamarin Forms or Skia Sharp or whatever it is that your Xamarin Forms control is and expose that out to Blazor with the properties with the event handlers. So it's fairly simple to do that and they have documentation on how to do that. And if I can run this real quick, you'll see, and there we go. So this one is a super simple thing. It gives me a couple of warnings, sure. And then this is a calendar, okay? And it's rendered again through the Blazor mobile bindings, fully interactive so I can do whatever I want. And this is the stepper. And if I do plus, you can see that it bumps up by 20. Uh, so I'm setting the properties on this with uh, with the Blazor UI. So this is uh, purely Blazor and Razor syntax that I'm using. Sorry about the sunlight coming in from one, my side. I can't, can't, can't block the sunlight. <laughs> uh, so that's pretty fun. Let's look at uh, maybe some more stuff here. Let's see, what can we look at? Uh, uh, let's talk about uh, the desktop here real quick, okay? Um, I'm going to show you one quick little project here. Uh, so mobile, it's pretty easy. You can uh, do a wrapper, uh, and you're rendering Xamarin Forms UI, which is essentially the native UI for iOS, Android, or whatever platform that you're going to. You're just writing Blazor or Razor syntax to be able to uh, get that. Okay, but what if you wanted to target the desktop? Okay, this one here is a project called Blazor in a Shell, which again, just by the name, you know where I'm going with this. Uh, and and this is nothing new. You've been able to do this for months now. Uh, so this is uh, using Electron. Okay, Electron is a very popular uh, open source project started back in 2013, and it's maintained. It's well maintained. I'm not trying to again um, uh, do a comparison of any any frameworks. I'm just trying to give you the facts here. Um, and Electron is what powers a lot of apps that you use every day, like uh, um, VS uh, VS Code, like uh, Slack. But those are all web applications that run fine on your desktop, and it is through the power of Electron, which essentially wraps up everything runs it inside of a huge shell. So what is different here is a couple of lines of code here, and we have brought in Electron.NET uh, API, so it knows how to bootstrap our application. And then we have uh, this little piece of code where I'm nearing up a browser window. Like this is a Blazor application, this is a Blazor server side. So all I did was file new project Blazor server app, and I have not changed any line of code, right? You can see like I, I don't even have the files open. It's just new up a new browser window, and then set the title on the window, and that's it. And if uh, hybrid support is enabled, uh, Electron Bootstrap, okay? So I can run this as a web application, right? Or I can run this as a desktop application. So um, bear with me here. I'm gonna pull up my terminal. Uh, make sure it's big enough so you can read. All right, so it became too big, and now it's off my screen. Come back, there you go. So I'm gonna go into my projects directory, which uh, is where I think this thing lives, yep. So I'm going to go into Blazor in Shell. All right, uh, and I think I have a sub project. Okay, I need to go one more step in Blazor in Shell. Okay, there we go. Now I'm in, and I can do .NET Electronize. Okay, this is this may be new. It's a CLI uh, tool from Electron that you can install, and I have to just say start. All right. So at this point, it's pulling in NPM if you don't already have it installed. So what uh, Electron is trying to do is host that uh, web application for you, and it's done, right? So now you have a fully native Mac desktop application, well, native in codes. And this looks familiar because it's just Blazor. I have not changed anything about the code, about uh, how this app runs. I've just changed how it bootstraps. So this is the same counter, and this is not WebAssembly. This is running Blazor server side, uh, and I mean, the Signalar bridge here is non-relevant because it's running on the same machine that it's on, right? So here's a desktop application powered fully by uh, Electron and, and Blazor. So it is absolutely welcome. Uh, however, uh, should you do this? Um, and, and it's yes and no, it depends on your needs. If you uh, watch uh, what uh, Steve Sanderson and the ASP.NET team has been doing, this, this is an older post like back from 2019. What Electron does is it ships to give you that uh, stability of what you're running, because browsers are different, right? So you are not uh, assured of the features or whatever 
So it ships with Chromium and it ships with Node.js. So you have a standard thing to run on. Do you need to do that? Because this is what maybe makes it a little bit of heavier application. It's a little more resource intensive. So they have been working on lightweight uh, uh, kind of a web view, a shell that can host uh, laser applications. And I mean, the memory footprint and, and these things are much, much lower if you use like a uh, laser in a web view because you're not shipping Chromium. You're not shipping Node.js runtimes, right? So uh, let's take a look at that. And um, I'm going to switch here real quick and kind of show you a different flavor of this. Uh, let's see. Let's look at this one here. So this one is actually going to be what's called the hybrid project. Here, um, I have uh, two runtimes. So I have a .NET standard library. And let me see. I have four minutes. Jeez, I'm running out of time. Uh, I have an iOS uh, thing. I can run it on Android as well. And I have Mac OS, OK? Uh, so if I run this on, um, on iOS first, let's take a look at that and start. I think my simulator is still here. Oh, why is my activity monitor running? That's going to need some resources. Here's my app. OK, so Blazor, right? Um, similar idea, but this is not Blazor mobile bindings. This is literally a hybrid app here. So this increment count, uh, it goes up and down, right? And then this is the classic Blazor thing. If I go down to counter, you'll see that the counter component is being shared. So I can do that from either place, and it updates, right? And uh, what I can do here really quick is switch up uh, this startup project. And now I can go build and run and by just by the name of the project you know where this is going and it opened up on a different monitor so let me pull it down trust me i did not do any voodoo it just opened up on a different monitor okay so this is blazer on desktop but not using electron okay uh, so this is the hybrid app so it's just wrapping it up in a nicer or a lightweight shell uh, same idea, you can increment, and it's just the counter, and this is just the fetch data, which is local. So here is Blazor app running on a desktop. So how is this working? Uh, it's not magic. It's pretty simple, actually. This is main uh, Razor. Uh, this is what is powering this just main view. And if you look at it, this is pretty much what Xamarin or the Blazor mobile bindings does. right? So this whole thing is Xamarin, stack layout. That's just essentially rendering Xamarin stuff. But within that, this Blazor web view this is the new little shell that is lightweight, and it can essentially just host a web application, which is what this one is, right? So when I look at the Blazor side of this, this is just the Blazor. This is just web code. Uh, everything that, that you see here in this, like pages, the counter, the fetch data, this is all web stuff. There is nothing going on. We're just like uh, bootstrapping it and hosting it inside of that shell. And for um, like the, the counter razor, you can see like these are all Blazor components. There is nothing different about any of this, just a pure Blazor application that's running. Uh, the only difference here is if you look at um, the iOS version, the, the app delegate, which is which is what controls how your app is bootstrapped, this is what it's doing. It's literally loading up Xamarin Forms, right? Because that's what gives us the shell so we can show the web view. And again, you don't have to do Xamarin Forms. This is just showing you the hybrid model. So what I'm showing you here is, um, Essentially, uh, this experimental mobile bindings, this is native, right? But you can come on down. And uh, if you look at advanced, you actually have a way of building um, hybrid apps, uh, if I can find that uh, right here. So uh, they have a few sample apps here. This one's a to-do list app, which is native. But then if you get down to your hybrid app, that's what I'm showing you. And this this has like iOS, Android, uh, Mac OS, and, and uh, WPF support. So it is using Xamarin Forms to kind of bootstrap your application and load it up. Uh, and you don't have to do this. You can absolutely go load up the newest web view that you find in your runtime, be it on Mac or be it on Xamarin Forms, and just load up your Blazor application. This is just giving you access to the native uh, stack if you need it to. So that's for iOS. And if I look at the app delegate here for my Mac project, it's exactly the same. And if you're uh, funny, it's when you write uh, like a Mac application with Xamarin Forms as a renderer, you do this exact uh, classic trick where you new up a new NS window, which is a UI component for Mac, and you give it some dimensions and you set the title. And all that you're doing inside of it, uh, if I can find it somewhere right here, is Xamarin Forms in it. And beyond that, this main razor view comes in and says, OK, these are my native stacks. I will render the native label buttons. But this little web view here, this is where I can load up my Blazor project and uh, work with that. So what I'm trying to say, I'm out of time here. What I'm trying to say is uh, the world is your oyster. If you are betting on either Blazor or Xamarin Forms or Dr. and Maui, you're in a good place because these two things will see a lot of interportability. And you should be able to write 
mobile and desktop applications with Blazor and vice versa. Uh, so you should be able to target the Mac OS or uh, Windows desktops with Xamarin Forms or .NET MAUI, uh, moving that more, giving you more confidence and evolving that stack uh, overall, okay? Um, so I talked way too fast. If there were any comments, sorry, I, I missed it. Uh, but uh, feel free to uh, ask me questions. Any anything uh, I can answer? You do have five yeah, more go. minutes if you want to. No, no, I'm good. I mean, I can just keep on going down this pipeline, of <laughs> showing, showing you more. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, everyone's watching is hopefully uh, already in this stack, so you know where to go look around. So. Again, start with the Blazor uh, uh, docs if you are into Blazor or if you if you want to do Xamarin Forms. This is a question I actually had uh, Maddie Leisure uh, from the Xamarin team on my stream earlier this morning. I know David Ortno is going to be on later today. This is a question that's been asked a lot. Like, what's happening with .NET Maui? Everything is happening. It's just uh, we are living through a pandemic, so uh, we got to pace ourselves. And things are happening at uh, as you. Um, as you might expect for uh, for .NET 6 and, and later on this year. We do so, have sorry. a lot of questions. Let's yeah, yeah, bring in a couple of them. I wonder if Apple will plan to handle this with a PWA since they like to maintain tight control over their ecosystem. <laughs> what do you think about that? Uh, that's fun. Uh, so thank you for asking the wonderful course. That's, that's a nice thing. OK, so this, you, you're right. Uh, Apple doesn't like this because it's going directly against their monetization model. And they want apps in the store. So if you look at uh, Safari, like th this is a web application that it's running on, right? If you look at Safari today, it can be like, can be said like Safari is a new IE. So they are dragging their feet a little bit as compared to like Chrome or Firefox and supporting PWA features. But they're not like they're grudgingly on board. I don't think uh, they're going to be fully on board. Like they they like their native stuff, but they also realize that developers want to have that flexibility. So if you're building a PWA, you always want to check like does my browser shell or does my browser support these features that I'm trying to use? And if not, then fall back to using something that's a, uh, that's that's something that's supported. Yeah, it's kind of fun that Apple is the app store phone right now, because when Steve Jobs invented the iPhone, it was no apps. So mm -hmm. yeah. It was only PWAs or whatever it was called back then. Yeah, and it changed quickly. Uh, I remember those yeah. times. <laughs> yeah. Does oh, Telerik does... have any reporting components for Blazor? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think I should stop sharing my screen. But uh, yes, absolutely. And uh, what is important here, Gustavo Martin is asking, um, reporting is not often considered a very like a sexy part of your application, right? <laughs> but it is so needed for enterprises. It is so needed for whatever solutions that you're trying to build. Um, so this is something we take seriously. And of course, there are reporting solutions around. So please look around and choose something that works for you. For us, the reporting is uh, is big uh, kind of it's, it's a difficult task to do because uh, it takes a lot of investment. And we've been doing this for like 15 years. So we have a reporting engine that can pull data from whatever sources you want and the report viewers, which is where you're delivering the report. That can be WPF, that can be uh, WinForms, and that can be all things ASP.NET, Angular, React, any of the spa things. And we do have Blazor report viewers. And uh, when you're writing reports uh, for Blazor, it doesn't feel like you're writing an old school report. It's absolutely the Razor syntax, and it's, it's beautiful. So uh, take a look at uh, Tillery.com. Just drill down into Blazor, uh, go down into reporting. There are demos where you can actually not just view the reports um, mm -hmm. in your Blazor app. You can also have a report designer. So if you are handing off things to your uh, users who are non-technical, but you still want them to be able to um, yeah, sorry about the sunlight, it's way too bright. Um, <laughs> you want them to be able to kind of design their own reports, so you can do that too. You can actually enable a report designer, which lets them like drag and drop parts of the report and pull from a data source that you uh, that you control. And uh, yeah, it's good. So it's both for report viewing and designing. You touched a little bit on this. What about WinUI versus Maui versus Blazor UI? It's getting complicated, isn't it? Too many acronyms, <laughs> too, too many things that are changing. OK, um, so WinUI is the most modern moving forward. That's going to be the Windows UI stack. Because if you look at what Universal Windows Platform started out doing, is they were coupled too closely to Windows. It was great. 
And um, what just we what we needed was less than one step up so that we're not so closely tied to the Windows uh, updates. So WinUI is the new stack that's supposed to sit on top of both Win32 and UWP. So you should be able to write every like desktop application on Windows with WinUI. So WinUI is here to stay. That's the thing moving forward. In fact, like it's not quite out of preview yet. Like we at Telerik, like we are, we are waiting and ready with the WinUI suite. Mm -hmm. It's just Microsoft has not blessed it yet. So we can't go live until they say it's good to go. So WinUI is very exciting. And .NET MAUI, if you look at how Xamarin Forms reaches the desktop today, it's it's a it's a little bit of a, a convoluted scenario. These were uh, pull requests uh, that were accepted into the Xamarin Forms code base. So they are absolutely part of the Xamarin Forms. But your renderers for WPF and uh, Mac, those are community-driven projects that have been now accepted. And they have never really taken that preview uh, label off those things because it's not a Microsoft thing. So they're trying to give you more confidence. So going forward, .NET MAUI, uh, which is essentially Xamarin Forms Evolved, will likely sit on top of WinUI. It will use WinUI to reach the Windows desktop. So MAUI is here to stay. MAUI will most likely run on top of WinUI. And Blazor, again, like we talked about, it's it's your thing. If you want to do .NET, if you want to do web, choose, choose your poison. <laughs> 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 yeah. MBB. Uh, uh, wait, what, what is MBB? It's important. Uh, Blazor I'm binding. Oh, oh, yeah. I see. <laughs> oh, Elon Lipton. Yes, he's the he's the PM. Um, it's not ported to .NET five yet. Uh, who owns the repo? Says they're focusing on getting right. Yeah, so uh, I think there are folks working on it. They they have engineering teams, and and what's happening here is a lot of collaboration because um, everything is .NET, right? So the Xamarin Forms team is working with the .NET team and the Visual Studio teams to enable these tool sets and and the, these developer scenarios. So Elon is the guy, is the PM for Mobile Blazor Bindings, uh, and and he's got a team. But I think they they just have to do things right with the .NET teams and with the Blazor team. So it's not like a one-off silo. So I think a lot of things are just coming together as we speak. So just be patient a little bit. Uh, we should be hearing more. Uh, during maybe the May timeframe where Microsoft Build Conference happens. So a lot of things are in flux, but the overall overarching goal should be Blazor or Xamarin Forms or Maui. Pick either one you know, based on your comfort levels, and you should be good to target a wide variety of platforms. Awesome. So is this <laughs> in, kind of yeah. cannibalizing Xamarin by yeah. having Blazor mobile bindings as well? Yeah. OK. So. Folks who are old, like me, or maybe like uh, I know Daniel does a lot of Xamarin Forms as well. Like we are not the audience, okay, and and that's okay because it doesn't need to be for uh, everything. Doesn't need to be for everybody. If you are happy writing C sharp and XAML, keep on doing that for for Xamarin Forms. Uh, Blazor Mobile Bindings is here for the folks who don't want to write XAML. And sometimes we forget this because XAML, if you have done it for years, like it comes naturally to you, but there's a bit of a learning curve. Like you don't do XAML, like one fine morning you wake up and start doing XAML. You need to learn. <laughs> there are behaviors, there are binding patterns. There are, there's a lot of things going on design pattern wise. So this is for the Blazor folks who are writing web apps. Why should they be just writing web apps? Why can't they come and write native apps as well? Uh, with Xamarin Forms, where they don't see any of the complexity of Xamarin Forms, they just render things from uh, from a Razor uh, syntax. So, in a, I mean, it, it's not cannibalizing, but it's just like more welcoming of folks who don't want to write C sharp and XAML or or in view. And, they and it's it, still Xamarin, even if it's another way to write the UI. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, this is an interesting thing. Like, does it uh, compete with React Native or Native Script? That, that's a great question, Alex. So thank you for that. So here, you're now getting into JavaScript versus .NET conversations, OK? Yes, it, it does, because what React Native or Native Script does is, again, take your uh, web skills, JavaScript or, um, or TypeScript with Angular, with React, or with Vue. And there's this concept of JavaScript native apps where you are writing purely native uh, UI, native performance with React Native. Flutter is kind of in, kind of in the middle. It's not quite native, but it's a lot of like CSR painting. Uh, but Native Script and React Native have beautiful performance uh, on, on mobile devices. And so if JavaScript is your thing, go do those things. You don't need to do Blazor Mobile Bindings. Blazor Mobile Bindings is for the .NET Blazor developers. right? So again, pick your poison, .NET or JavaScript. If you are happy writing JavaScript, go do that with your 
uh, SPA frameworks, and you will be able to write native mobile apps uh, just fine with React Native or NativeScript. If you want to do .NET, then choose between Blazor or .NET MAUI. Is your hybrid example .NET Core 3 or .NET 5? Oh, um, let me let me check. I I pulled it down, but let me do a quick check here. I think it is actually .NET Core 3 is uh, is what you have, and maybe this is something uh, they are in the process of uh, upgrading. No, you're you're right. This is still running on .NET Core 3.1, and I think what's what's happening is. Um, Chris uh, Scoble here, uh, what's happening here is with .NET 5, like the thing they wanted to do is exactly what you're referring to. Like there is a bit of fragmentation, right? There are multiple .NETs. There's the .NET framework, which is not dying. It's just fine on its own. There is .NET Core for the last like four to five years. There is Mono runtime, which powers all of uh, all of Xamarin. So they are trying to unify this. And it's difficult for even like uh, a beast like Microsoft to be maintaining so many different uh, kind of BCLs and runtimes. So with .NET 5, I think they took the first stab at uh, combining the runtimes, uh, but this is work in progress. Uh, so right now, what they're trying to do uh, is, again, I don't work for Microsoft, but they're trying to take the best of Mono, they're trying to take the best of .NET Core and put that together into one runtime that Xamarin and, and .NET MAUI can run on. Uh, so I think right now it is on .NET Core 3.1, uh, maybe early days, maybe they'll port it over so it runs on .NET 5. I just don't think they're quite there yet. <clears throat> and the hybrid web view is running inside of your app. It's not web assembly or uh, base yeah. server or something like no, that. It's it, running yeah. inside it's in your app. Yeah. yeah. So if you were to build a cross-platform mobile app today, what would you use? So again, granted, for the nth time, I'm old. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I have my experiences and my biases and my uh, patterns that I like. So I'll, I'll choose Xamarin Forms today, uh, ah, knowing okay. that uh, my apps will migrate just fine to .NET MAUI. And I can then take the same code base if I don't have the confidence right now to support Xamarin Forms on, on Mac or WPF or like Windows, knowing that come .NET MAUI, I will have the confidence from a single code base to be able to do those two things. But again, that's just me because I have the XAML background. If you don't, and if you are excited about Blazor, then go do Blazor because again, you're setting yourself up there to be able to run on all things web and you can do a PWA if that's something you're okay with. And PWAs are, I mean, they get a bad rap sometimes because they're not native really. And you're using the web as a distribution medium. But think about like for simple line of business apps or like forms over data, you're, you're fine really with uh, with with the PWA. Um, so if you want to do Blazor, you're fine on the web, you're fine as a PWA, knowing that later on in this year, the things that I talked about, like you will be able to reach the desktop and mobile devices uh, much more easier, be it in a native mode or be it in a hybrid mode. Uh, so it's coming. Cool. What, I know that you've been working with Blazor for quite some time. What is your favorite feature with Blazor? Oh, boy. Uh, I think folks like you and uh, Ed Sharbuna and so many others are much more Blazor aficionados than, than I am. I'm much more actually <laughs> with, with Daniel. I, I work more on the XAML and XAML forms uh, side. Um, I, I'm excited about that little web view, although it's not, not Blazor. But to be able to have my routing and my data binding and everything just work because it's just a web app and be able to load it up because this this is a key part of the strategy for Microsoft as well. Like to be able to enable Blazor apps to run everywhere, that that's key. And it's a very lightweight web view and it just works everywhere. And just like with Blazor, like my favorite feature is just Blazor itself. Like the first times when we do the demos where you show a Blazor app running in Chrome, and you pull up your uh, network stack, and you see the .NET DLLs flying to the browser. That that's beautiful, right? It's yeah. still still a little scary because uh, like this is an ongoing effort to kind of trim the size of what we are shipping. But just like if you all sit back and think about what this is enabling, it's it's, it's magical. Like there are concerns about security and authentication and authorization, which I'm sure will get more and more flushed out. But it's amazing what what Blazor mm -hmm. does today with WebAssembly. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us.